Welcome back everyone to another ESO build video. Today is going to be the update to the burn build, the Magicka Dragon Knight for the Scale Breaker DLC. This build has been on my channel for quite some time. It's had multiple updates and of course this one is running off the same premise as before where we have high single target damage, decent AoE, we do bring a buff to the group and above all you don't need any trial loot at all. Now there is going to be a variation of this inside the video explaining what you can do to enhance this, but at base you don't need any trial loot whatsoever. But of course if you want to go that extra mile, you can. So, first of all we're going to go into the stats, pop a potion, make sure our food is on. We are on 39.5k max magicka, 16.5k max health and 11k max stamina. 1574 magicka recovery which is massive, 2.5k spell damage but that's going to go up way over 4, 4.5k when we put our buffs on and of course we're on 53.6% crit chance we have 14.7k spell resistance and 96 physical they are low but you can put on a resistance buff if you want or you can get one from your group if you have people supplying it 64 points into max magicka we're using the shadow Mundestone, and we're a stage 4 vampire the food we're using is the clockwork citrus stuff it is gold it is expensive and it does give you maximum health maximum magicka and mag and health recovery if you prefer, however, you can use Witch Mothers, which is a little bit less and doesn't have the health recovery. Or you can use Flat Stat Food, which is Max Health, Max Magic. If you use the Flat Food, however, there is a different rotation, or you may have to Heavy Attack a little bit more often. But we'll get to that during the video, especially when we get to the skills and the rotation part. So I'm going to go into the skills in detail. I'm going to explain every single one, what they do, where they come from, why we're using it, and alterations and swap outs that you can use as well versus the situation. If you already understand all this already, or if you think you already have everything that you need, you can, of course, skip this. But if you do, you are at risk of asking questions that have already been answered. If you do that, I won't be responding to them in the comment section. So just be warned, this is at your own risk. But I'm going to go into the skills now, starting from the first one. Burning Embers. This is an Ardent Flame skill line. It's the second ability you unlock. Starts off as Searing Strike. Morph it to Burning Embers. This is a very, very strong single target damage over time ability. And it heals you for the amount of the damage done when the effect ends. Now, what that means by effect ends, there's three different ways for that to happen. It can run out. You can recast it. Or the enemy can die. Whatever one of those three situations you're in... You will receive a heal equivalent to 75% of the total damage inflicted while it was up. And that also means that this can crit doing damage as well, so that heal can be larger. And it looks like this. It's very, very simple. Flame, breath, uh, flame claw on the target and does damage over time. Now if you claim it, you will heal. As you saw then, it was up for half the duration. I got a 19k heal out of it. Let's let it run out. This is unbuffed, by the way, so this can go a lot, lot higher. Three, two, one. We're now going to get a heal. 21k. Now, if you have really hefty crits, that can be a lot, lot stronger. But also, you can take it straight away to get quick heals. That's a 2k heal, 3k heal if I'm really quick. Up to 5k there. Or I leave it running a couple of seconds. And they're massive. You can get really big crits. Ignore that fire circle. We'll get to that later. That's really fun. Now... Next up is Degeneration. This is from the Mages Guild skill line. This wasn't on the build before, but this has been somewhat enhanced in this update. It's a single target damage over time again. It lasts also 12 seconds, just like this one does. You do want to make this one last its full duration, however. This one you want to last as long as possible, but you can claim the heal if you're in shit. But this one will actually not benefit you at all if you reapply it. You need to let this run out or run its full duration. And not only will this give you major sorcery for 24 seconds, increasing your spell damage by 20%, which, yes, you can get from your potions as well, but this will also do a damage over time, and all of your light and heavy attacks will restore 100 magicka. This is insane. Second ability in a mage's guild starts off as Entropy Morph it to Degeneration. I don't use this on my easy sort because our sustain is covered, but this one we don't do that many heavy attacks, so we do need this. This is really, really nice. There is another variation of rotations and skill setups that I will get to towards the end if you don't want to use this and if you still want to use the previous setup, but for now, we're using this. Again, just like the, the flame uh, damage over time, this just attaches to the target, but this one is from range, so you can cast it from a long distance away. And of course, just like the flame damage one, you can cast it on multiple targets. So as you can see here, you can put it on loads of different ones. And just note, by the way, when these run out, 
you can get a heal from each one. So this is really, really nuts. We'll let these run out, actually, so you can see it. 20k heal. 31k heal. 33k heal. 28 as well. Disgusting. You, it's really hard to die in ad pools. Now, next up, of course, is Engulfing Flames. This is incredibly important. This is in the Ardent Flame skill line. It's the third ability you unlock. This is called Engulfing Flames from Fiery Breath. You want to take this morph, not Noxus. Noxus is a poison version. This is a fire version. This will hit the targets in front of you with damage over time. Oops, wrong one. And... Oh, God. I showed off too much there. You don't want to see that. We'll do it on this guy. It does an instant hit. Then it does damage over time. So, very simple. As explained, single hit first. Damage over time for 12 seconds. But, this will hit six targets. It doesn't say so here, but it will. Any AoE abilities that have a debuff to penetration or anything like that, or even a damage modifier, so you hit them harder, will hit six targets, not the maximum. Um, which is basically uncapped at the moment. So six targets only, but every single one of them will now have an effect on them, not just the damage over time, but they will now take 10% more fire damage from everyone. So again, we'll try and do this without proc in the set, actually, because we don't want to see the big flame thing. In fact, we'll get the flames running first, so we're on cooldown, and then I'll show you the, the flame breath on the enemies. Run right out, good. Now, you can hit six targets with the dot, but you can hit all targets with the hit. So the initial burst will hit everyone, but the dot won't. Now next up is a Harness Magicka. This is in the Light Armor skill line. Starts off as a Nullment, morph it to Harness Magicka. This will actually just coat your health bar and protect you for 8k damage. Now this can be obviously stronger if you've got more health because it's capped at 50% of your maximum health. But, at the moment, with no buffs on, we've actually got an 8k damage shield, so we're protected for that amount of damage. Now, just bear in mind, of course, if you do get hit with Magicka abilities, you will restore Magicka. You'll actually get 206 Magicka back for each Magicka hit you take, up to 3 hits. But, this is enhanced by 33% for each light armor piece worn. So, if you just activate the shield, instead of seeing 206 back, you'll see 545. So, each magic hit that we receive will give us half a k magic back. As long as the shield persists. So that's actually quite nice. He's expensive. You don't want to spam this. But if you do use it and you do get hit by that type of damage. You can get some back. Which is helpful. Now this is a flex slot. In an extreme situation. If you are in a very optimized group. Your healers are amazing. You never need to use a damage shield. Because you're that good with mechanics. And you can just go a little bit squishier. If you want to do that. This is very rare. But if you want to do that. You can, of course, go into the Mage's Guild, unlock Mage Light, morph it to Inner Light, and you can put this on your bar instead. That is very rare for that to happen, but if you're in a situation where you can utilize this, you will get more damage out. Because this, for being on your bar, will give you increased 5% to your maximum Magicka. And there are Mage's Guild passives as well. So if you choose to, you can swap that out. But if you find you're dying too often, you're not applying your heal to keep yourself up all the time, you may want to make sure you have a shield on here. The choice is yours, however. But just remember, if you recast this ability, you will heal. So you might not necessarily need to spend 4k magicka on a shield. You might just hit this and survive. The choice is yours, however. Damage shield for 4k and take the hit. Or reapply a dot and take a massive heal. Up to you. But this is really, really good. And you're looking at our max stats now. You can see that we're actually 41.6 instead of 39.5. So it does add quite a bit. So next up, we'll put that back to the shield for now. Just so it doesn't confuse anyone. Next up is Molten Whip. Now this is a very unusual skill because they changed it a patch ago. Um, it's application anyway. Molten Whip is our main spammable. Now this is the first ability in our Ardent Flame skill line. It starts off as Lava Whip Morph it to Molten Whip. Now, this is very strange, because this allows us to open up kind of a passive called Seething Fury. Now, this hits a single target with a whip, and it's mega. But if we stack up three procs of Seething Fury, we do a wicked backflip, and our whip does 33% extra damage. And each stack of Seething Fury will give us 75 increased weapon and spell damage. But that big whip will remove it, so you'll have to stack it up again. Now, how do you get these stacks? What you need to do is you need to cast Ardent Flame abilities. So, look at my buff timers in the bottom there. You'll see there's a couple of eyes with the number one in it and a countdown timer. Now, you'll see it's two. Now, it's three. When that three is there, that's when you get your backflip. 
and you're hit really, really hard. But you can't cast this over and over and over to benefit from it. You have to use different Ardent Flame abilities to stack them up and then consume it. That is in our rotation. Once every rotation, we will get three stacks. We'll get the extra spell damage, up to 225 spell damage. Then we'll consume it with a backflip and then start again. There is another rotation from the previous video. If you're sticking to that, that's absolutely fine. If not, if you haven't seen it before, I will explain that at the end as a choice if you want to go flat food. Again, I did mention that earlier, but I will explain it later. Don't panic. But for now, we're sticking with this. This is really, really solid. So we will use this our main spammable, but every rotation once, we'll get that wicked backflip and extra damage from our whip. Next up is a Meteor, or Ice Comet, or Shooting Star, whichever one you want to turn it into. This isn't our active ultimate. We don't technically use this. It's just on here for passives. It's in the Mages Guild skill line. Stats off as Meteor. Morph it into Ice Comet or Shooting Star. It's entirely up to you. You do need Mages Guild 10 to get this. Again, it's just here for passives. I'll explain the passives in a moment. If you do actively use this in content... You may want to swap this to shoot and star because you get ultimate back per enemy and it does fire damage. But the choice is yours. Again, essentially, we don't really use this. It's just there for stats. Now, Molten Whip is on both bars. Why is it on both bars? Well, we're going to skip ahead a skill. We're going to skip ahead to Flames of Oblivion. This is in the Ardent Flame skill line. It's the fifth ability you unlock. Starts off as Inferno and morphs into Flames of Oblivion. The other one is a healing morph. This is a damage morph. This, when you activate it, will last 15 seconds. And every five seconds, as long as you're in combat, otherwise it won't hit anything, you can hit up to two enemies dealing flame damage and direct damage. And this will give you major prophecy for being on your bar as well. Although, we do have that covered with our potions. Now this scales off your highest offensive stats. So if you've got really high stamina, this will scale off of that. If you've got really high magicka, this will scale off of that. Now, what we do with this is just keep it active once every rotation to make sure that we have this fireball around us and it can hit stuff. As you can see, it will only hit things if I'm in combat. If I'm not in combat, it won't hit anything. But you can hit two enemies. If they're aggroed. See, he wasn't, now he is. Now... Why is this important and why have we skipped ahead? Because this is an Ardent Flame skill. As is our Burning Embers, as is our Breath. Now we've put the Whip on both bars because if you use an Ardent Flame ability, the Seething Fury proc happens. But it won't happen on a bar that doesn't have this skill present. So we have to double bar it. So we've got it on both bars, meaning if you look at the bottom buff timers again, look for the eyes. That's one. That's two. Swap bars. We've got it on both bars. That's three. Now when I go to the front bar again, there's my whip. So my whole front bar rotation is going to have this in it. It's going to have this in it. I'm going to do some shapes. Then I'm going to go to the back. I'm going to put this in. I'm going to do some more shapes. And when I come to the front again before it runs out, I'm going to use it. I will explain the rotation, but that is how that fits in perfectly in your rotation. You will use three Ardent Flame abilities every full rotation, excluding your whip. And you'll be able to get a whip every time. Now, next up is Unstable Wall of Elements. Now, this was changed also. Unstable Wall of Elements used to last six seconds, while Wall of Elements or Elemental Blockade used to last eight. Now, the new Elemental Blockade actually lasts 12 seconds, where this now meets the timer of the last one. Now, this starts off as Wall of Elements, morph it to Unstable Wall of Elements. It's the second ability in the Destruction Staff skill line, and you want to have this morph specifically. The other one has a longer uh, reach, and a longer duration. This one, however, deals much more damage because it has an explosion at the end. Now, the type of weapon you're using depends on its damage output and damage type. This particular one is a flame staff on our back bar, so we benefit from the flame damage bonus. Burning enemies, which is a status effect chance from fire, will take 20% more damage from this ability. So as long as they're taking burn and status effect um, damage, they will get more damage from this. We will be causing burn and status effects. We are built for nothing but fire except for degeneration. We are doing so much fire damage. This is going to happen. It's really, really strong. You must keep this down on the ground at all times. All targets. Yes, all. No cap. All targets under there will take flame damage. As you can see, every single one of them is getting hit. We'll get a bit closer so we can see the, the damage. Every single one. And then it explodes. Now, our rotation is quite short. But it does run off during the back bar. But just make sure you reapply it as soon as possible. If you're inside mechanics and you have to wiggle about a bit and you think you have to restart your rotation, don't panic. Because although this does an explosion at the end, if you reapply it, it will blow up. 
as you can see, it will explode. So if it's on these targets here, I reapply it, boom, boom, boom again. Really, really handy. So keep that up all the time alongside your dots. And remember, of course, this is fire, as is the whip, as is the engulfing flames, or burning embers even. And that means engulfing flames will enhance all of this by 10%, including this. Next up is Beast Trap. Now, this has been changed. It's now called Barbed Trap. It's in the Fighters Guild skill line. It used to be called Rearming Trap, this particular morph of it. So that's off as Beast Trap, by the way. And it used to last six seconds, giving us minor force, increasing our critical damage by 10%. And then it used to rearm and do it again. So it used to last 12 in total while doing physical damage. It doesn't do that anymore. Instead, it just arms itself once and lasts for 18 seconds. So it's much, much longer than before. And it's really, really nice inside our rotation as well because it fits just right. Now, here's the trick to this. Put it under the target, it can immobilize things. It doesn't immobilize bosses, but it doesn't mean it doesn't work. You still get the damage output, and you still get Minor Force the whole time. Keep this up. We have a lot of crit damage. We want to make sure that we do crit, and this will contribute towards that as well, because it stacks on top of our Munda Stone and our passives. Really, really handy, so don't let this fall off. Now, next up is Eruption. This is in the Earth and Heart skill line. It's a fifth ability to unlock. Starts off as Ash Cloud, morph it to Eruption. You don't want the other morph, because that's a heal, not a damage over time. This is very expensive, but it does last 18 seconds, so we use it once every second rotation. Don't spam it. This is very simple. Goes on the ground, does damage and area of effect every one second to every target caught inside of here. And no, it's not capped to six like the breath. Every single target. As you can see, they all got hit, and now they're all taking damage over time. It's very, very strong indeed. So you've got to keep that down the whole time. While this is down, have your wall of elements down. Make sure your breath is running and keep your dots up and your whips in. Everything in here will take damage over time. And of course, if you keep your breath up, they will take even more. Finally, of course, is our ultimate. This is absolutely disgusting. This is in the Ardent Flame skill line. Starts off as Dragon Knight Standard, Morph to Standard of Might. This is our main ultimate, not the Ice Comet. This is, we want to use this as much as possible. Now, any enemies caught inside of this will take damage every one second. Not to mention, of course, this will apply major defile, so their health recovery and heal and receives is down. So any healy bosses or healing adds are pretty much screwed. Also, for standing inside of this, you will actually do 15% more damage overall, and you will take 15% less damage. Now, don't just activate this and then fire your abilities. Make sure your abilities are down first, so that they're ticking over, then drop the banner, and then continue with your rotation. Because anything already running will be boosted by it as well. But if you just slap the banner down on the ground with nothing running, you're going to waste valuable seconds actually reapplying stuff that you should have had down in the first place. Make sure that you've got some stuff down, do some shapes, drop the ulti, and then carry on from there. Don't just do nothing and watch it just tick away at wasted. Make sure you are active in combat when you're using it. You can get it down early, of course, if you've got a couple of dots. As long as something's down, you're good. But make sure that you don't just fire a blank banner. Now, of course, this has a synergy effect as well. If someone nearby takes a synergy from you, this can actually pin targets to the ground via a big chain that will shackle them to the actual banner itself. And they'll be immobilized for five seconds. Plus, it does really high flame damage and area of effect, whoever takes it. It's really, really handy. Make sure people take this synergy. Now, we're going to go into the passives. These are very, very important, so pay attention. This increases the damage of your burning and poison status effects. We're not doing any poison, of course, but we're doing a lot of flame damage. Burning is a status effect that can happen by chance if you do fire damage. It's a single target damage over time ability that comes from it. For us, for being a Dragon Knight, ours is 50% stronger than anybody else's. Also, when you apply a burning status effect to the enemy, we'll miss the poison part because we're not doing any poison. When you apply a burning status effect to anything, you will restore 500 Magicka. And this can happen every two seconds. This used to be every five seconds. Now it's every two. That's a massive resource gain. It is really, really powerful. Get that passive. This one, if you do any direct damage from Ardent Flame abilities, you will apply a snare to them, which reduces their speed, which is quite handy. Uh, increases the damage of your Fiery Breath, Searing Strike, and Dragon Knight standard abilities by 10% and the duration by two seconds. This is the passive we were talking about a moment ago. This ability here, this one here, and our banner all get a two second increase duration and 10 percent increase to damage every single one of those was buffed with this update increases the damage of your flame area of effect abilities no it doesn't say class it says flame area of effect now this is area of effect 
this is area of effect, and so is this, and there are class abilities. This is not a class ability, this is a weapon ability, but this is affected also. And our monster set that you keep seeing fire off, our circle of lava, which is awesome, that is also affected. But we will get to that in the gear anyway. Now, Draconic Power, we're not using any abilities here, but we do want a couple of the passives. You want this to increase the amount of damage you can block. These two here are about heat and receives if you have a Draconic Power ability active, which we do not. And this is a recovery if we have a Draconic Power ability on our bar as well, which we do not. If you choose to put a resist buff on and swap stuff out, sure, you'll lose damage, but you'll have a resistance bonus. When that's active, of course, you will benefit from it. But we're not using one specifically. If you choose to, however, this is when you're going to want these passives. You will want this one regardless, however, because this increases the range of your instant cast melee attacks by two meters. So this actually has seven meters now because it counts as kind of a melee ranged ability. It's really, really nice. Now, you do want this one, of course. This increases our spell resistance. As a Dragon Knight, we have higher spell resistance, so get this passive. Earth and Heart, of course, is the most important passive of all. This increases your Earth and Heart abilities by 20% duration-wise. This lasts 18 seconds now instead of less, which is handy. Battle Roar is insane if you use an ultimate. The reason we're using this one, not only because it's OP as hell, but because it's expensive. If you use an ultimate, you gain back 46 health, stam, and magic for each point of ultimate cost. This one costs 200, so we'll get 46 200 times. This one costs 250, so we'll get 46 250 times. This one is the one you want to use all the time for your resource gain and for your massive damage output. This, of course, is insane. When you cast an Earth and Heart ability, you and your group gain minor brutality for 20 seconds, increasing your weapon damage by 10%. Of course, our weapon damage is not that important, but we are using a Beast Trap, which is physical damage, so that will actually benefit us, but above all, Minor Brutality will give all your nice stamina DPS people much needed increase to their damage. And all you need to do is cast this. We're casting that anyway. As you can see, we have Minor Brutality and so does your group. 10% increase to weapon damage is huge for your group. It's very, very nice indeed. Now next up, oh of course one more thing for this. If you do activate this ability at least once every 6 seconds, you'll get 3 ultimate back, which is handy. Now finally... When you cast an Earth and Heart ability, you restore 990 stamina. So, of course, we're using a Beast Trap, which costs stamina, or we're blocking or dodge rolling. But if you activate this, you get it back. Really handy. And if you are really low, say, for example, you're in Mechanics, and you haven't got enough stamina left for the incoming block, it's going to be massive. You can actually just hold block and spam this a little bit and get juice back. It's really helpful. Or just don't block and let your recovery do the work. It's really handy passives here. You must get your Earth and Heart passives as soon as possible. Destruction Staff, of course. This one here is really important. Your fully charged Flame Staff heavy attacks deal 12% additional damage. So if you ever do need to heavy attack, you will do more damage with it than other people. Uh, this will increase your Spell Pen for Destruction Staff abilities. So your Wall of Elements, your Light Attacks, and your Heavy Attacks have increased penetration. So you should go through the target's resistances. But, of course, this is covered in our Champion Points to consider all buffs and bonuses being applied. But... If we were to dip 10% in those and put them elsewhere, our abilities wouldn't benefit. So we go as far to 18200 as we possibly can, but this one does add a little bit more penetration for our destruction staff abilities specifically. No, you can't overcap. So when you hit 18200, you can't go any further. But if buffs are off, then we can benefit from that because we can still close the gap a little bit. This here increases your chance to apply burning, concussion, and chill status effects by 100%. It's not 100% to, to do it. It's 100% on top of what the base is. We have an increased chance to apply burning status effects, which will give us magic back and will, of course, do more damage with Wall of Elements. Very, very handy indeed. Equipped in as a flame staff, as long as we're holding one, all damage that we do with single target abilities will be enhanced. So... This Whip and Flames of Oblivion are direct, so they will be boosted. But also, this here, although it's attached to the target, and this, although they are not necessarily direct damage as such, like a projectile, they are single target abilities and they are boosted. So that's also very, very handy. And finally, if you kill an enemy with a Destruction Staff ability, you restore 3600 Magicka. Very, very handy indeed. That includes your Light and Heavy attacks, by the way. Light armor, of course, you want at least five pieces of light armor, otherwise you can't take advantage of this shield. But, if you take these passives, for every piece of light armor you have, you reduce the effectiveness of snares applied to you and reduce the cost of sprint. You increase your mag recovery and reduce the cost of mag abilities. 
This increases your spell resistance per piece worn. This requires five pieces and gives you a 10% crit rating. Even though it says 2191, it says it's actually 10%. And this gives you 4884 spell penetration. That means that debuffs and buffs and all that good stuff that actually goes through the target's resistances, obviously they do count, but this is what we have flat out. It's really, really handy. We're using five pieces, by the way. These can be enhanced if you go for seven. We're in one piece of medium armor. You don't necessarily need this crit bonus, although it will contribute towards your beast trap, which is tiny, but it will work. This you do want. It increases your stam recovery and reduces your cost of stam abilities. We are using one ability. We want to get the cost down. We want to get our recovery up because we're going to need it in mechanics. This isn't that necessary unless you need to sneak. This one is useless because you need five pieces. But this one here will increase your movement speed when you sprint, just in case you do, and reduce the cost of dodge roll. So in mechanics, again, your avoidance abilities do cost stamina, and this will allow that to be cheaper. We are using one piece of heavy as well, so you do want the resistance from this passive. The constitution passive as well increases our resource gain, so we actually get 108 magicka and stamina back once every four seconds if we're taking damage. It's not massive, but it does count. And this gives us a 2% increase to our max health as well. So what we've got here is five pieces of light, one piece of heavy, and one piece of medium to give us all these nice shiny small bonuses. But, of course, we are using the Undaunted passives as well. So we will go over these briefly. This, if you take any synergy, any synergy whatsoever, you'll gain back 4% health, magic, and stamina. Goes without saying, you should be taking synergies. Every single one will either heal you, buff you, shield you, damage the enemy, whatever. There's lots and lots and lots of synergies in the game. Every single one of them is beneficial regardless. Take them all. You will get resources back. And if a tank is crying that you took a spear off them, they can take another one. You're on cooldown now. It doesn't matter. And also, they should probably learn to heavy attack a little bit and stop crying at the healer. It's not the healer's fault the tank can't sustain. Now, this increases your max health, your max stamina, and your maximum magicka by 2% for each piece worn as well. So, we're wearing three different types of armor on purpose for all the nice tiny passives. But again, this passive actually benefits us massively because we have a 6% resource increase overall for everything we have. Really, really nice. Now, we did skip ahead of one. We are using Fighters Guild passives, of course. Intimidating Presence makes this cheaper, so you will want that. This, however, is very important. When you kill Undead Daedra or Werewolves, you will generate 9 ultimate. Every single kill. Get this as soon as possible. Mages Guild, of course, we are using these. This reduces the Magicka and Health cost of Mages Guild abilities. Of course, we are using one, so we want to get the cost down. This will increase their duration. It's a 12 second duration instead of 10, which is quite nice. Uh, this will give us increased maximum magicka and recovery for each Mages Guild ability slotted, which is why we have Meteor on our front bar. This gives us a magic increase bonus, and so does this. And, like I said earlier, if you are comfortable healing yourself with this ability, and your group is very, very optimized, and you're not squish squish, you can, of course, change this to Inner Light. So instead of having 4% across the board now, you actually have 6. So it's very, very handy indeed. This one, of course, casting a Mage's Guild ability will grant you Empower, which will increase your next light attack damage by 40%. Now, we will be using this in our rotation, so every time we use this once, our next light attack will be enhanced. It's actually really, really nice. Now, we are a Vampire, of course. We use a Stage 2 Vampire or higher to get this recovery bonus to Stamina and Magic, which is awesome. And, of course, we need Stage 3 or higher to get this passive, which is the Undeath passive. This will allow us to take much, much less damage if we are under 50% health. So we get really tanky the lower our health gets, which means we're less of a burden and less likely to die really, really quickly. However, just be aware, of course, when you are a vampire, fire hurts you a lot more, so just don't stand in stupid. Most fire mechanics can be either stepped out of, dodge rolled, or avoid in one way or another, so just be careful where you stand. I'm stage 4 on all of my characters, and I don't have any issues with them, but I do know that some people are scared of fire for being a vampire. They don't consider the fact that it's a damage mitigation bonus, they just look at fire and die. Don't stand in stupid. If you do want to go down to stage 3 or lower, this is entirely up to you though. It's your choice. I'm very comfortable with it, maybe you are not. We are of course a Khajiit. As you can see, we have a tail. We are benefiting from increased health recovery, stam recovery, and mag recovery. That mag recovery is only 85 points, but that is quite substantial to the overall um, sustain. Believe it or not, that does actually count. Um, this increases our max health, magicka, and stamina by 8 to 5. So we have a resource pool across the board, which is slightly boosted, which is nice. And of course, this is massive. We increase our critical damage and crit healing by 10%. All of our heals that we do, and we do heal from our damage... And all of our damage that we do, if we crit either one of them, it's enhanced by 10%. And it stacks with Beast Trap and it stacks with Armunda Stone. 
Very, very nice indeed. Yes, I've tried multiple different races as well. Unfortunately, I say unfortunately because I don't really like cats. Unfortunately, the cat did actually outperform. So, it's a cat. Simple as that. You can be a high elf, you can be a dark elf, be whatever you want. The high elf actually did about 3k, sometimes 4k less DPS. Although it's got flat resources, it lacked the recovery and it lacked the crit damage. So this was really, really nice. But again, the choice is yours. I'm actually quite glad he's a cat, even though I don't really like him. Because to be fair, he does look feckin' awesome. So, Kajita is. You're, you're winning me over, Zoss. <laughs> um, medicinal use is the final passive that I'm going to go over. This is the most important one in the game, in my opinion. We are using spell pots. They are expensive. We don't want to make them last 36 seconds like they do when you make them. We want them to last 47 seconds like they do now we have this passive. This is very, very important indeed. And that means, of course, the cooldown is 45 seconds. You can keep your potion up 100% of the time. Really, really helpful. Now, just to give you an alteration on um, this... Whip and Sustain. If you are using flat stat food, max health and max magicka, and no recovery at all, this is when you can change your rotation a little bit, and that is when you can put this on. This Unrelenting Grip, instead of using one ability, one ability, by the time you get to the back bar, you've got your third ability, by the time you come back, you've got your special whip. Instead of doing that, once you've put your first abilities down, this will have to be a shield, by the way. You'll have to swap this to either a shield, or you can keep degeneration if you're if you're comfortable. It's up to you. What you can do is you can use this chain. This will pull enemies in. This will give you a speed bonus. It will actually do damage, but it will be refunded of 100% of his magical cost if the enemy can't be pulled. Now, bosses can't be pulled, and ads that you've already pulled in can't be pulled because they're on cooldown. This is a free spammable, and it's an ardent flame ability. So, if you are trying to go flat stat and you want to be able to sustain, three of these will actually count towards that buff. Take your whip. Three of these. Take the buff. That is infinite sustain. But it is slightly less damage overall for a single target kill. However, the choice is yours as far as that is concerned. This is very helpful inside mechanics and ad pulls as well. If you're trying to be the one that can bring your class utility in and you want to help the tank, pull him in, pull him in, pull him in. Your tank's probably pulled them all up together. They're on fire. You start whipping stuff. It's actually very, very helpful. You do damage with it. You can maneuver enemies with it. And you don't necessarily lessen your effectiveness that much your single target damage overall on a single target fight using this method rather than the rotation that i'm now about to show you with the standard kind of whip breath dot carry on the difference is about 3k overall there's not much in it so first of all we're into the gear now remember i said you don't have to have any trial loot you don't this is burning spell weave burning spell weave inferno stuff that really 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 rare stuff it's not actually rare. It's the same chance to drop as any other weapon in the game. The difference is, you want it, don't you? And Zos knows that, so get your farm on. Basically, City of Ash 1, very easy dungeon. Go in there on normal if you want. Kill everything. This can drop from the last boss. This can drop from chests. And this can drop from adds. So kill everything. You want the staff and three jewelry. Two arcane, one bloodthirsty. Yes, I tried three bloodthirsty. Yes, I tried two infused, one bloodthirsty. Two bloodthirsty, one infused. And all these different manner of combinations, this actually topped out. Because our execute is pretty much wet. We don't really have any passive executes that kick in. So the only thing we really get is when the health goes low, everything starts going a bit higher. But it didn't benefit us enough versus the overall. Some builds have passive executes. So my Stam DK, for example, Dual Will gets stronger at low health. Poison Injection gets stronger at low health. We've got nothing that gets stronger at low health, so we're just going weaker all the way through the fight with no real burst at the end. Whereas a Stam DK, for example, already has that built in, so it does benefit. It's, it's just weird how it works, but this, this topped out this way round. Um, so three jewelry and the staff. The staff, for those of you who are not aware, does actually count as two pieces. Now, this is max magic, spell damage, and spell crit, which is awesome. But when you deal damage with a flame ability, you have a 15% chance to apply a burn and status effect to the enemy and increase your spell damage by 5 to 5 for 8 seconds. But it's got a 12 second cooldown. So it's up for 8, down for 4, up for 8, down for 4. This does carry over. Now what you're looking for is, in my buff timers here, let me apply a burn and status effect. Come on. There you go. 
See the, the brown buff there with a the hand with a flame in it? That's your burning spell weave. The reason you want it on your front bar is because you don't really want to go to the back and it procs. And then you come to the front and you've only got half a buff left. You want it to fire on your front bar so you can take full advantage of your stronger whips and stronger dots and all that kind of stuff on your main damage bar. So you just want it on the front bar. Now the back bar weapon of course is the Maelstrom Inferno stuff. Don't panic just yet. Flame Glyph with Infused Trait. This will enhance your light and heavy attacks dramatically if anything is caught in this. So your light attacks and your heavy attacks are boosted to hell if anything is caught inside this wall of elements. If you don't have this right now, do not worry. You can put a willpower staff on the back or a crafted staff of your choice, whatever you want. But do not put two burning spell weave inferno staves. Because this will proc on the wrong bar and you will lose damage overall. Make sure this is on the front and whatever you choose to put on the back in place of this for the time being will be just fine. Willpower gives you a flat 1400 um, magicka unless you gold it out, in which case I think it's a little bit more. But this will do just fine until you get it. Now, the monster set can be swapped, but it depends on what you want to do. This has max magic, and every time you do damage, you have a 10% chance to cause the lava circle around you, which does damage in area of effect with no cap. It has a 5 second uptime and a 5 second downtime, and it does damage within an area of effect of 8 meters. Now, this is a very simple one to acquire. This is from Vaults of Madness. So, this one is from City of Ash. You can just go in City of Ash 1 on normal if you want. Easy dungeon. This one is Vaults of Madness, also a very easy dungeon, especially if you go on uh, without hard mode. Hard mode is not that difficult, but you don't have to press hard mode to get the monster sh helmet. And shoulders, of course, are acquirable via chests, and now due to Scale Breaker with a new uh, plunder system, basically you have a heightened chance if you spend more keys to get what you need. So you want a medium and a heavy if you can get it in any order, doesn't matter which, but the vines on both of them. We'll show you how this looks. You've seen it already, but we'll just show you again. That circle on the ground, that is hitting every single target. Your AoE is massive. We were then doing almost 100k in AoE just from a proc. That's filth. So, that you want to keep on if you can help it if you're in AoE fights. Single target, it does very, very well. Almost the same as Zahn, but not always. This is very, very good for AoE situations or single target if you choose. But if you want to go just single target, go with Zahn. Zahn will give you a crit bonus. It will also give you a fire beam that attaches itself to the target as long as you stay in range from your lights and heavies. It will last 5 seconds and have a 13 second downtime, and then it can be reapplied again. Now this, every second, will get progressively stronger. Now all you need to do is a light or heavy attack to proc it. There's the beam. Breathe and fire. That does a crap ton of single target damage. The procs can sometimes be not so much in your favor in comparison to Grofdar, so that's why they can actually balance out single target. But a lot of the time, this can actually give a little bit more damage. And of course, just again, consider this is area of effect and single target. This is just the one target. So if you are in a fight and there's two adds together, and this one here is the boss, and this one is the ad, and you accidentally proc it on this one, come on, don't let me down, well then your boss is not getting the extra damage. Whoops, wrong proc, 13 second cooldown, dear oh dear. 18 second overall, but 13 seconds from when it finishes. However, Grofdar will hit them both. So, again, situational, it's entirely up to you. Grofdar is absolutely solid, really like it, but whichever is easier for you to acquire for the time being. Easy dungeon, easy dungeon, not so much. Finally, Robes of Destruction Mastery. This is a fantastic set, so flat and so happy with this. This will give you max magic, spell crit, and spell damage. So we've got another crit bonus, which is nice. We're doing crit damage. Spell damage is flat. Magic is flat. And while you have a destruction staff equipped, which, surprise, we do, you will gain 2,400 max magic just for having it. Flat stats are so high. Both bars has a destro staff. Done. And that will contribute to all of your damage. I know some people coming over from Warcraft are under the assumption that the higher your magic pool, just the more you can spam stuff. And some information out there has kind of misled people into that. Technically, yeah, the bigger the pool, the more stuff you can cast. But your resource pool contributes towards your overall damage. So the higher your spell damage and the higher your max magicka, the more they contribute to your skills and your lights and heavy attacks. So this massive resource increase is really, really nice to our overall. So how do you acquire this? Dragon Star Arena. There is a dungeon guide. It's, in fact, it's an arena guide. On my channel, I'll put it in the description for VDSA, which is Vet Dragon Star Arena. 
But here's the good thing. You do not have to go on vet to acquire this. You can do it on normal. Some people could even solo normal. But if you can't, take a couple of friends, run in there, get this stuff, get out, and just upgrade it. It will drop in blue instead of purple. That's the only difference. Also, this you can get off the market. You can actually buy this off of players. So that's from a dungeon. That's bought off players. And this is from a dungeon. Very simple. Chill night. Farming. All done. Very, very strong build. Now, of course, you can have this in any order. You can have Jewelry of Destruction Mastery. You can have uh, Body of Burning Spellweave, whatever. But you must have the Burning Spellweave staff as the two-piece. And you must have the Destruction Mastery set on at all times. You don't want the staff of this. Now, swap outs. What can you do to swap out to make this even stronger? You can dump Burning Spellweave. And you can replace it with Sororia. If you are more advanced. Or if you just run trials a lot now the perfected one you don't have to have it will give you an extra max magical bonus but you don't have to have perfected you can have the regular one the regular one can be acquired a lot easier actually you can go into a normal pickup group in cloud rest and just get lucky weapons drop from the boss and armor drops from everything else very easy to do in a pickup group on normal but the veteran one is obviously a lot more difficult. So you can go for the normal one to start with after you've got all this ready and you want to go that extra mile. And then later on, maybe go for the vet stuff. You've got kind of a, a progression build here. You can actually enhance it over time the better you get at the game. But the basic version is very, very strong. Now, if you were to get Sororia, you would need to make sure, again, it is definitely on your front bar weapon, not the back one. Why? Because when you activate this, you'll see a circle under my feet, which looks awesome. I stack up 30 spell damage every time that ticks, up to 20 stacks. I need to do direct damage to keep it up. But if I stay out of it for too long, it will fall off. But here's another bonus. While it's active, if I swap bars, it does not go away. And I can still enhance it and make it continue all the way up to 20 stacks no matter what bar I'm on. Now, what will this do in comparison to Burning Spellweave? Burning Spellweave will give us an 8 second uptime and 4 second downtime on 525 spell damage. Sororia, on the other hand, as long as you don't let the buff run out, will give you 100% uptime on 600 spell damage. Burning Spellweave, however, does have more bursts, because that can proc straight away with 525. This takes a little while to wind up. But Sororia, what it does is this will give you spell damage, no crit bonus, max magic, max magic. The second one, by the way, is only if it's perfected. The regular version just doesn't have it. 5% increase to all of your damage in Dungeons, Trials, and Arenas, and, of course, the effect that I just showed you. The damage output... For the whole entire setup, in content, can actually be almost the same. They are very, very close, especially since Burning Spellweave actually has the burst because of the, the full proc straight away. But again, the choice is, of course, yours. You can go for the very basic setup, which is market, fodder, easy dungeons, and then Maelstrom. You just have to go in there by yourself and hopefully get it. Or you can go for the slightly advanced version, which does have perfected Sororia, or any Sororia. Right, now I'm going to go into the champion points. 72 points into Ironclad to reduce the amount of direct damage we take. 64 and 64 here to give us a 13% reduction to all damage. 19% reduction to damage over time. And of course, this, if we break free, our next stamina ability is 80% cheaper. So if your Beast Trap is due to be cast soon and you've just broken free, you may as well take advantage of this reduction to cost for your next rotation. 19 points into quick recovery, so all of our heals that we receive from ourselves or other people is enhanced by 5%. And of course, we've got the Field Physician passive. This is really, really helpful when you're trying to res people because you take less damage. So make sure you've got either a damage shield on or Burning Embers is running. Because then while you're resing someone, you will take less damage. The shield will protect you if it's on or Burning Embers can actually finish and heal you while you're in here. So a little bit of a tactic there. Make sure you preempt your survivability before you pick someone up. 44 into Warlord to reduce the cost of break free. 75 points into Tenacity to increase our return from heavy attacks. We are not actually heavy attacking that often, but you probably will need to throughout the game, so that will help. 75 points into Recovery as well. Now, based on our rotation, if you're in an optimized situation, we do have stupid high recovery. So if you want, you can actually put another 25 points in here to get the final 1%. I would never recommend people normally do that because it's diminished returns and it's a lot of wasted points. But since we're not using Tenacity that much, you can actually trade this off a little bit but that's a choice you can make if you find you never ever heavy attack you may as well just take some points out here and put it in here and have that extra recovery it's not much though 
72 points into Tumbling to reduce the cost of dodge roll. We will need to dodge roll. This will help and give us a 23% reduction. Four points left over. What do we do with them? Put them into Shadow Ward to give us a 1% block cost reduction. And for doing so, of course, we've got 75 points or more in this tree. So when we loot treasure chests, we have higher quality gear. Good luck with that burning spell weave stuff. 51 points into Elf Pawn to increase our critical damage. We have so much critical damage, it's not even funny. This will actually benefit us a lot. 64 points into Elemental Expert to increase all of our damage we do by 13%. And 11 points into Spell Erosion. We actually only need 10 here, but I've got one point doing nothing. So I'll put it into here instead. We only need 10 points because we are actually pretty much on the nose for 18200 when it comes to all of our buffs and bonuses being applied in a group. But there's nowhere else to put it. Three points in Staff Expert to increase our lights and heavy attacks. And 66 points into uh, Master of Arms, which also benefits from this as well because lights and heavies are direct. This will boost all of our direct damage. Our whips, our flames of oblivion, our uh, um, initial hit from our lights and heavies. This will be really, really beneficial to us. And of course, your eruption first cast and initial hit from engulfing flames as well. They all benefit from this a lot. It's really, really handy. 75 points into Thermoturge, of course, because this will give us... 23% increase to our damage over time and we do actually have a lot of damage over time but in the meantime of course if anything goes off balance we have the exploiter passive which means all damage done will be increased by 10% during that phase. Off balance is now 7 seconds not 5 which is really really nice. Now I'm going to explain the rotation. This is actually quite simple so do not panic. There's going to be two rotations, one of which is based on the chain rotation, which I mentioned earlier, and another one which is basically our static rotation, which we're going to keep up all the time. So, we have our recovery food on. You can use Witch Mothers if you want. I've already gone over this. Make sure that's on. And what you need to do is you need to put your Beast Trap down on the ground. Your Beast Trap needs to be active at the beginning of the fight. Prior to the fight starting, by the way, you can fire off three Flames of Oblivion just to get your Seaf and Fury up and running. Beast Trap down, Eruption, Light Attack, Wall of Elements, Swap Bars. Very simple. That's your back bar rotation. Doesn't get any more complicated than that. Eruption, Light Attack, Wall of Elements with your Beast Trap down. Now, for the rest of the fight, your back bar rotation is going to change a little bit. It should be Eruption, Light Attack, Flames of Oblivion, Light Attack, Beast Trap, Light Attack, Wall of Elements, Swap. So, along the bar, you can see from right to left. One, two, three, four, swap. The next time you come around to this rotation, you don't want to reapply um, eruption because it costs too much and it lasts 18 seconds. Beast Trap you do just in case it falls off. You don't want any fall off on minor um, force. So the next time, instead of going right to left with all four abilities, you just cut out the first one. So instead of eruption, you just cut oblivion, trap, wall swap with a light attack between every single one this is deliberately set up to be simple for you so right to left ignore the whip obviously you don't want to use that now on the front bar we need to cast burning embers straight away now take into account by the time we get here we're going to have three ticks of seaf and fury ready so we'll imagine we've got those running already burning embers take the whip then we'll cast the whip Three times. After the backflip. Light breath. Light degeneration. Swap bars. So in that order. The claw. Four whips. One backflip and three normal ones. One breath. One degenerate. Swap. Remember what I said about the back bar? Right to left. Eruption. Light. Flames. Light. Trap. Light. Wall. Swap. Now. I'm going to put this together and you're going to see when I swap to my back bar, my Seaf and Fury building up. Because I'm going to take it with the whip. So we're going to build it up. Now, it's been taken. So I've got three whips. One, two, three after the backflip. Flame Breath, that procs one. Swap bars. Oblivion, procs two. Back to the front. Burning Embers procs three. There's my whip. One, two, three. Breath. Degenerate, Flames, Beast Trap, Wall, Embers, Whip. In that place, every single time without fail, that whip will always be a backflip if you get your rotation right. So after your first whip, Breath is one proc, Flames is another, Burning Embers is a third, Whip. Always drop your ulti just before your Wall of Elements. Because you want to get the uptime on Wall of Elements. 
Now, the other rotation, the, the variant, if you like, if you were helping with CC or you were using flat food and you need the recovery and you want to still be able to spam just as much about heavy attacks, that is when you swap this to a chain. And this, of course, can be a shield if you choose, but if not, you can keep it in your rotation. It's really handy. This is very simple. Same rules as before, where you have your dots down. But... Well, just imagine we've got three procs. Here's your whip. One, two, three. Whip again. Breath, swap. Flames, light, beast trap, light wall. Whip is ready. Three chains. One, two, three. Whip again. Breath, degenerate, swap. Eruption, light, flames, light, beast, light, wall, light, flames. Free whip. It's not a free one, but a backflip. Three chains with light attacks. Whip again. You will never, ever, ever run out of magicka if you do that. Yes, the chain spam is slightly less damage than the whip itself from the basic spamming. But you can guarantee two whips every single rotation and you will never run out of juice. When you drop an ultimate, ignore the chain and just do five whips or something. But that's the old rotation and it's still very, very viable. And it can help in really big ad situations where you want to put everything in and still keep your damage up without just being a chainer. Really helpful. Anyway, back to basics. Stick to the original one if you prefer. But if you like the old rotation, especially the one with the chains in it, then of course that is still fine. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to show you a quick dummy pass. I'm going to show you the extreme situation. So I'm not going to do any cheesy food or anything. We're going to be using the same food we're using now. With cheese food, you'll have higher flat resources and you'll have stupid recovery and you can spam all day and hit 90k. Yes, I've done it a million times already. It's fine. But you're not going to do that in content. The food here, this cheesy food, which I'll demonstrate for you, this one here, gives you max magicka. Exactly the same as the flat food. The one I've told you to use when you're doing chains. Now, the recovery, 459, is not something that you can acquire. When it comes to the Stam Cheese food, you can find almost 500 recovery by people using Dwemer Spiders and Master Staves and all that kind of stuff inside content and maybe a couple synergies. You can find that. This for Magicka is completely different. Ellie Drain and Worm and also your degeneration skill and your own recovery from your potions is already covered when we're hitting that dummy. Where are you getting that five, 459 from in your group? There's a monster set that can give you magic back. There's a couple of things that can give you magic back, but not to that extent. And most people are not actually using them. So when you're using this stuff, it's not accurate. But I'm going to use the proper food that we do actually use in combat. And I am going to use the variation with in a light on and no shield so that i just take advantage of the heal from this as and when i'm assuming that you're experienced when you're doing this but if you do put a damage shield on instead which i would recommend actually you're only gonna lose about 2k dps overall it's not that big so here we go
So I hope that helped. Hopefully that gives you a better understanding of how to approach this particular build, how it works, what you can do to optimize it, what you can do from the basics as well as far as getting the loot. And of course, hopefully that makes you feel a little less scared about getting into the harder content because you can start with a very strong viable build without any need for trials whatsoever. Again, of course, you can upgrade it. So first of all, thank you all very, very much for watching. I hugely appreciate the support. If you are not subscribing already, please do hit that button. It's free. Furthermore, if you want to help support outside the channel, there are some links in the info section for Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, and of course the website, zynodgaming.com, where all the written guides are as well. Don't forget, there's also an All About Mechanics dungeon series, especially for those of you that need to farm dungeons for certain gear. Everything is explained, everything is demonstrated, all vet hard modes shown and explained. And there's an add-on on PC as well. One more thing, of course, I do live stream on Twitch every night from 10pm UK time, unless I say otherwise on Twitter. Once again, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.